Good morning. Welcome to the Straw Family Farm Take 2. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel, we have Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So that's true. It's from my Bob Base. It says devotional, but I use this as a Bible study. I study on each lesson each week. I have a different devotional that I do. So anyway yeah so there's that and uh so last week i wasn't feeling a whole lot of anything i worked on the hook latch and sorry i had too much <laughs> today and i have gotten this far i just have the deer left to do um and I've been working on it. I don't know if I'll get it done this week, but I'm sure hoping so. I've finished all the dark green, all the black, um, all the blues, uh, all the greens. There's like three shades of green, all the black, all the um, blues up the top. And pretty much it's just the browns and the creams and, and doing the deer itself. So, yeah, I got quite far on it. Um Oh, I'm fidgety today. Uh, I really didn't do anything throughout the week other than that. I did get in my uh, outfit that I'm wearing for the wedding. Now, it is a one uh, a jumper, and it's got kind of, it's split legs, but it comes across in the front kind of as a dress. Um, let me see here. I don't know. I, I don't want to have to back the camera up to start over and all that. Let me see if I can find the photo that was online. And you'll see it's really kind of cute. Um, of course, now I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it looks like this. All right, and it's very nice. Now, one thing I have learned is when you buy something that you want to be perfect, you have to do a fitting. And this does not fit properly. Um, the top is way too, I mean, it comes way out here and it puckers. And so I first looked at doing darts and I still have them in here. And I don't like them. The the way it lays with the, with the little darts, it's not going to do right. So. What I have decided is, and I just haven't taken the clips out, is that there is a casing up here at the top, and I am going to run me a little piece of elastic, really thin, like shoestring thin elastic, and draw it up. And, and that way, number one, it will draw evenly because it'll be run all the way around from this side to this side. And then all I have to do is make two little seams. And I think it will look much better because it will, uh, it'll lay a little bit better. Won't have gaps. Um, the other thing is I may have to hem it. Um, it depends on what shoes I end up wearing with it. I wanna look at doing my black. I haven't gotten to the shoes yet. Uh, one thing at a time, I guess. Um, so. I got that and I played with that um, and it looks okay. I really kind of like the way it looks. It's got a flattering body um, thing. I don't look like a big blob. I don't look as good as the uh, model, but then again, I'm probably not a size two and she might be. So anyway, so I did play with that a little bit. Then um, a friend of a friend had a garage sale. Sorry, they, she had a lot of material and yarn. And so one of the things that I found and I got them for machine embroidery is she had these things. There's quite a few whites. There's a green, there's a blue and a mauve color. There's some mauve one. And then, um, 
the whites all have different um, colored ribbons on the bottom, and they're just bookmarks, and they all look like this. This is the only one that was out of the package. So I thought that'd be cute to, you know, they're made for hand embroidering, but I think I'm going to machine embroider on them. Um, maybe put faith, joy, love, that kind of stuff down the center, and I can use them at the office for Christmas presents. So, yeah, I picked that up. Then I did find she had material, but I make small projects and I don't want three and four yards of everything. Remember, I'm trying to downsize and my goal is to be into a tiny home. So I don't want extra fabric that I'm not sure what I'm doing. So um, I did find like a yard of this and I thought it was so cute. So when I got back, I made a little notebook. I stopped and got one of those dollar composition things. And this one, of course, I have a pocket in the back. I do think that I might make these at Christmas. Um, but I'm going to make them super simple, like the covers that you made when you're in school to put over your books. So basically, it's going to be just this big flat part, all one. Um, and then I'm just going to put elastic in it buy a dollar composition book and give those as as Christmas gifts as well so yeah but I like mine um I made a little trim for it and a little and I thought about putting a little snap on it so it stays close but I decided not to you know it's just something I was playing with so yeah I'm gonna do that uh the other thing that I found at the garage sale I don't know why I'm so yummy. Was she had uh, wool. Now this right here. And these I'm going to show you. They were at a garage sale. So you've got string. You've got hair. So I didn't buy any acrylic. And there's a reason why. You'll see that this has been stored away. Not too wonderfully. Um. And you literally can just sit here and pick stuff off. But uh, when I smelled it, I was kind of like, ugh. So I found five skeins. You're looking at this one. This is Lamb's Pride Worsted. It's 85% wool, 15% uh, merino. Okay. And it's this, uh, I think it's a jewel, jade. Jade color. So. I got five skeins of that for $15, which if you know yarn, that's not a bad price. Um, then I found this. And again, not stored great. It's got any one of these. You can find stuff and you can take the roller over and get stuff off of it. But there are five of these and I gave $25 for these. Now, the difference in price comes with the fact that these are 478 yards each. So I got, you know, over 2,000 yards of this. And then each of these skeins are only 190 yards, I believe. Yeah. 190 yards per skein. So... I only got, you know, 950 yards of that. Um, when I got back from the garage sale, of course, I kind of got inspired, made my little notebook cover, and then I really just wanted to make something different, something I hadn't made before, something, you know. So I know we have talked about this book. Um, it was a gift for my grandma. This is her copy and she gave it to me and this is the encyclopedia of 300 crochet patterns and stitches patterns stitches and designs so it starts with the basic you know slip stitch teaches you how to read patterns um yeah i never really look at the chart um charts is is really the only way that I know 
for sure how to do it. Um, anyway, so I found one in here and it says multiples of eight plus three. So I can't remember. I did 90 some on this 90. I can't remember how many, <laughs> but I did the multiple of eight and then I added, um, Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong one. Multiples of six plus one. So I know I did 90 some. So how many other times, you know, I, I want to say 97, I believe maybe 98, someplace right in there. And so I started with a chain stitch and then basically, uh, this is really cute, but I like it. Um, so it comes out like this and basically what it is, is a uh, V stitch with a front pole treble in front, uh, triple treble, however, everybody says it different, whatever you want to call it. So, and there's no spacers in between. There is spacers down here on the first row. Now, my plan for this, and I may have to go and order some more of this. I may have to look and see if I can find some someplace. Uh, I'm going to do two and a half skeins and see how wide it is. From there, I'm going to make a second one if it's, you know, I want it loose if it's long enough. All right. So I'm hoping it will be as uh, down to my bodice, you know, with the two and a half skeins. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to make a second one if it's long enough. And, and this is where I'm going to have to change it up. But the front part will be, will have a twist in it. So that this will become the top, this will become the bottom. And when I do that, I also have to twist the pattern so that half of this from this over here will be back pole and half of this will be front pole. So that the design actually comes out in the front, if that makes any sense. So it's really a cute idea. I've seen it done with some other flat ones. I haven't seen it done. You know, they did all double crochet and it looked really cute. Um, I haven't seen it done in a pattern design. And it's just two rectangles. The back is flat and then the front has a twist and it makes it twist in the front. So you have this little gather in the front and then you have your arms out to the sides. So it's kind of like a poncho, kind of like an oversized cardigan type thing. And so, yeah, and I've gotten this far on it. Uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight rows plus the, um, chain to start. So yeah, I like it. I like the way that it's going and we will see how that goes. A, a lot of it will depend on how long I can make it with the width that I want it um, with the two and a half skeins. So, uh, which y'all know, I do stuff like this all the time and not sure you know, how it's going to turn out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't want to have to rip it out, but I actually can make it narrower if I need to. We'll see. <laughs> I don't really want to, I want it to be loose fitting. Um, but it may be too short for me. So I don't know, it might end up being a gift. It is um, a single ply, which here's what I don't like about single plies and maybe it's just me, but see this right here. It does this and it twists and turns the whole time you're pulling it out of the skein, it comes out and, and does this. Um, I like a well-balanced yarn and that's very hard to achieve with a single ply because it's just one. 
um, when you do two and you ply them, it offsets the twist. So if you've over plied a yarn, you just over ply the twist and it will balance out. So I always tell people there's no, there's no such thing as over twisted yarn or over twisted. You just have to make sure if you've over twisted it, that you also over twist the ply and it will balance out. It's not a big secret. Um, I know people to act like you have so much twist, not enough, so much, there's no such thing. If you don't put very much twist in it, you don't have very good quality yarn. If you over twist it, just over twist the ply. It works. And it will balance out. When you hold up a yarn and you can do, if it doesn't do that, and you just lay it like this. I, I can't bring it too close together because it'll ply up together. But if you can do that and it doesn't twist together, it's well balanced. Just say. So I do prefer a well balanced yarn. I don't like to have to fuss and and fight with my yarn to get it to uh, quit twisting up. But anyway, it is what it is. The other thing is is that when I block this because of I'm picking the stuff out that it wasn't stored right. Uh, and once I get it all picked out, when I block this, my trick for, cause wool, and this is why I didn't buy any acrylic there. Uh, because it all had fuzzies and just, it is what it is. And it kind of smells, but, even as I have aired this one out, the smell has dissipated. So um, it will get better. And if it doesn't, I will, I use a spray bottle to block. I don't soak my stuff and then block it. I lay it out, pin it, and I spritz it uh, pretty good, not through and through, but just enough for it to hold its shape. Um, I will add a little bit of fabric softener to it or vinegar. Um, either way, wool does not hold smell, so it dissipates. When I went to the garage sale, they had had these stored inside for the evening. And then where they had put them out was, um, around this table. And they had them in these bags and they had these bags sealed all up. And the first thing I did when I got to the house was... I pulled all them out and let because they had let them start to sweat. So these had started to sweat. Um, so had the purples. And even with them just, I just brought them all in, laid them out on the table, and just let them lay. Uh, it's actually starting to smell more like wool yarn instead of stink. So, yeah. Um, it's getting better. And like I said, if it finally, with the air around it, it's starting to smell more like wool. Okay. So it's my alarm. I have to go to work today. So, uh, it is starting to smell more like dyed yarn, which is a good thing. So, and the more I work with it, you don't want to stick your head down and smell the bags because not only is all that fuzzy there, there's an odor. Um, I don't know. It just just wasn't stored right. It's almost like it was just thrown in bags and not sealed up in like some place that had like a storage unit maybe or a storage facility, someplace bugs could get into or I haven't found any bugs. And so I'm not really worried about that, but, uh, but just not stored correctly. So it got fuzzies and nasties and, and little, um, uh, cobwebs and, most of it seems to be pet hair all bunched up, so we'll see. But it is airing out nicely, and that is the reason I didn't buy acrylic. Um, I bought wool, solid wool, because this other one, <clears throat> it's, let me see here. It is, I know it's solid wool, but Peruvian wool, Highland wool. 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So, um, 
yeah and as you can tell by the things here it just I don't know but see there's another little thing here and that stuff is all over every skein so yeah now these will have to be ball wound um, which I will do I'm not sure I think I'm gonna do a cardigan with the purple one I'm not real sure so anyway definitely are is am back to working on things a little inspired you know but we'll, we'll see um as to how i'm going to figure out because this is one thing i wanted to touch on when i do this and i do it tells you any multiple six plus one so you just you know 23 plus one or whatever however wide you want it okay um the one thing that i will do is when i get to the end of this skein i will figure out how many rows i have how many inches the that amount of rows are and then i'll double it plus you know time 1.5 or 2.5 two and a half to see how wide this is going to be before i proceed so i won't waste all the time making the whole thing i'm only going to use this to get my calculations off of so i know kind of simplistic but that's how i do it uh, <laughs> Granny always taught me just to keep it simple. Okay, so if you work one skein and it's this wide, then I will figure out if I want it, I want it kind of big and airy. So yeah. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna work one skein, then I will double it and then put that width that. Oh, I'm sorry. And the width of a half skein on there and Go from there uh, if it ends in the middle of the row I just subtract that part off because unless it's over half then I add a row um, just because because if you have a half row okay and a hundred and ninety yards will do ten rows and a half if it's over a half I add a row in if it's under a half so it depends it's just which side I measure from so if it's over a half I'll measure in with the half and then double that plus the other half skein that I'm gonna do if it is under a half I will actually use the other side that is shorter and go from that width times two plus a half so um it's just a way of estimating it's super simple like I said, Granny always said, keep it simple and you won't ever go wrong. So anyway, other than that, that is all I've been working on. Uh, getting things done here, keeping the laundry done, beds. I don't know what all this is, you know, just a normal thing. Worm had his uh, nail appointment, got his nails clipped, but other than that just been kind of it's been very rainy and drab and yucky so as a matter of fact it's very foggy out right now it, it's rained about seven inches here now unfortunately the farm only got about three or four of that but I'm hoping it's enough to fill the pond um, I'll have to have RJ update us on that because it's been drought conditions up there you know even just the 30 minutes away that he is that's how bad the drought conditions are the pond here is full overflowing the pond there is uh was still low so um we'll see i'll get with him and see how it is and update y'all later but anyway i'm gonna get off here i've got to go to work and uh yeah it's monday Ugh. i don't i don't know i'm just not really feeling wanting to go to work um it is what it is so all right i'm off here i will talk at you later you have a great week bye